Hi everyone and welcome to the channel. Today on the bench, we have a very special watch. We have a Breitling, actually it's my first uh, Breitling, a Breitling Premiere, as you can see on a, on a dial. It has a, a gold case, you see as well a, a full gold case, we see a bit when we disassemble. But first, let's put the watch on a time grapher. And as you can see, the watch is not running very well. The amplitude is really low at uh, 180 and the beat error is very, very high and it's losing 42 seconds a day. So yeah, this watch definitely need a, a service. So that's what we're going to do in this, uh, in this video. Okay, so I remove the strap and you can see like the, the dial is so nice on this watch and uh, with this, uh, with these black hands, very thin, really thin hands. So we're going to open the case back with a knife and see what we can find inside. There we go. That's a nice movement. So it's a Venus 178. You see with the Breitling name as well on a, on a chronograph bridge. And you can see there actually a lot of mark inside. You can see it's a 18 karat gold uh, case. And uh, a lot of mark from previous watchmakers that uh, worked and did service on, the, on this watch. Yeah. So now I'm going to remove the, the movement from the case by just removing these two screws. And actually the movement is coming from the front on this, uh, on this watch. So same, I just remove the bezel and, uh, and the crystal. Just going to align the hands and um, should, be able, should be able to remove the hands first. You go just with my uh, pair of lever there, just remove the hands. And you see this movement actually has uh, three sub counters. So you have the one with the second, that's the one with the hour. And you have the one on the, on the, on the side, this one, that's the one with the, the minute from the chronograph. So it's like, uh, yeah, three, uh, three sub counter on this one. So that's, uh, like I said, that's a Venus 178. You have as well the Venus 175, which is exactly the same, but without the hour counter, so which is just a, a tiny bit simpler. We see a bit after when we uh, disassemble the movement. Obviously, more you have, uh, you have some extra complication, you will have more parts to disassemble and reassemble. Okay, so now you see the movement is coming from the front. I'm just going to release the dial fist screw there, just to release this beautiful dial. Just going underneath with my tool there, just to raise it slightly until it come off fully from the, from the movement. There we go, that's it, perfect. And you see quite a lot of parts on this side, on the, on the dial side compared to a normal watch. And that's actually, like I said, you have a, a hour complication from the chronograph. So this all the parts for the, for the hour. Just removing the cannon pinion there. Very long cannon pinion. You see the, compared to other watches, it's like quite, uh, quite long. Okay, as I like to do first, I will try to remove the power. And you see there, I need to go underneath the part just to grab the click. And when I, the click is grabbed, I can release the power very gently by holding the crown in between my fingers. We see if the watch is coming to a stop pretty quickly. Yes, it does, you see. So that's a, that's a sign, yes, that there is some uh, friction in the watch. Like the amplitude was low as well. So yeah, that's already a sign that you, you, you lose a lot of amplitude due to the friction. So we see if with, the, with a service, we can, uh, we can address this issue, yeah. Okay, remove the balance. And now we're gonna start to disassemble the chronograph function. All the parts from the chronograph, which is mainly on the top. And we saw that there is as well some parts on the other side, on the, on the dial side. But we are going to start with this side by removing all the, the springs from the chronograph to remove the tension. And like I said in, in previous video, when I work on chronograph, I like to put back the screws as well on the, on the plate. Because each screw, they have some small, very small differences. And you don't want to mix them when you reassemble them. So the safe way to do it is just to put them back on, uh, on the plate for the movement. And like that, for sure, you will not mix them up when you reassemble the watch. Okay. So this is a, a colon wheel a chronograph. It's not uh, a cam, so which is basically like a, like a nicer uh, chronograph. Like the, the action is a, a bit smoother, a bit better than a, than a cam chronograph. So the colon wheel, we see these parts like with the, like the triangle teeth on it, we will disassemble. And basically it's these parts that uh, activate and make everything switch in the movement from st to start, to stop, and to reset the chronograph. Okay, now removing the chronograph wheel. 
we have the break there. There we go. See a couple of springs as well, just removing gently. We have this part as well, which is, you see some of the parts are a bit rusty, a bit uh, damaged. Like this one, you can see like there is a bit of rust in it. Like uh, this is acting as a spring. It's quite tight actually to remove it. Just grabbing it like, yeah, there is like a little uh, part that go in the case, which is, there we go, that's it. Okay, so we have all the mechanism there for the minute wheel, actually to drive the minute wheel from the chronograph. This is kind of a jumper for the minute wheel. And this is a minute wheel from the chronograph with the arch shape cam on the top. And that's a spring that keeps some tension in, uh, in the chronograph wheel. And we have this wheel, which is driving actually the chronograph, which is friction mounted. So you see, I use a Presto tool to remove it. And this is a column wheel that I was talking a bit earlier with a big screw in the center that I removed. Okay, so, so far so good. We have, I think, removed most of the parts from the, from the chronograph on this side. We can remove this little bridge that come on top. See a lot of, a uh, lot of hairs as well on this, uh, on this watch. I just need to remove this big screw if I want to release the bridge, which is tight, actually. It was very tight on, uh, on the other plate. That's why I use as well some uh, tweezers, like some brass or copper tweezers, just to make sure I don't scratch too much uh, the movement. Now we can carry on by removing the ratchet wheel and the, and the crown wheel. There we go, that's the ratchet wheel. The click there, you remember? That's the click that I hold just to make sure I release the power uh, because or else it's blocking the ratchet wheel and you cannot uh, release the power which is in the mainspring. And we have this little screw there which is on uh, for the crown wheel that I can grab and remove. There we go. Checking. Okay, so now we remove everything from the chronograph so we can start with the rest. We have the pallet fork. And you see the pallet fork is stuck to the bridge here. That's a sign of, uh, like I said, dried up. Normally you don't oil this part, but dried up grease oil or dirt that come into it and uh, yeah, make some friction and the parts uh, like is stuck to it. So yeah, that's why you, when you do a service, we disassemble all these parts and we are going to, to put them, you will see a bit later on, into a cleaning machine. And this should clean all the residue, all the dirt, all the oil, the grease, and uh, give back, if you want, like the, the friction, the, the, the normal friction to the, to the watch and to the movement. Okay, so I try to remove this bridge and it doesn't want to come. And actually, there is something blocking it, so I don't want, you don't force too much. And it looks like there is this part in the middle there which is preventing me from removing this bridge. Yeah, I cannot. I cannot lift it. I cannot lift it. Uh, I cannot lift it. So I need to check what's. Yeah, it looks like it's this part there. This this arm, which is blocking it. So we're gonna disassemble the other side now. So we move to the dial side. And like I said, we have all the mechanism for the chronograph. But not only we have the keyless work as well. But uh, for the chronograph for the hour wheel. So like we did on the other side, we remove the spring first, we move the tension, and uh, we disassemble all the, all the rest after. And same, same technique, we're going to place back the screws just to make sure we don't mix them. This is a big screw there, which is, you see, holding that's a hammer for the, for the, hour, for the hour wheel. This is the part you see, which is connected to the other side and which is connected, you remember, to the part that was blocking and preventing me to lift the bridge. So we see later on when we move back to the other side, if now the bridge is free. Okay, just removing this big plate on top there, which is holding quite a few parts underneath. So you see that all these parts are for the hour counter. So it had quite a lot of complexity just to, to have the hour counter on the chronograph. If you had the minute and second only, 
you will have been only the parts that we had on, on the other side for the chronograph, but all the parts that are removing now, it was just for one extra counter for the hour. Uh, so yeah, you see, it's it's adding quite a lot of complication to the to the movement. You can see there as well the star, which is a sign of uh, of Venus, of a Venus movement. So in this case, like I said, a one seventy eight, which is a very iconic. Uh, and uh, from the family as well of the very really iconic uh, chronograph movement, which started like in uh, around 1947, end of the end of the 40s until 1960, so quite a, a long life if you want for for a caliber. And obviously Venus today is uh, is part of the of the of the Valjou group, yeah, of, of Valjou. Um, but yes, they made some fantastic chronograph in uh, in the past and fantastic movements. Uh, like this beautiful 178. You see a lot of hairs, like you see a lot of hairs in the wheel there. So that's not good because, yeah, that will uh, affect the amplitude of the watch and as well the accuracy. So that's why as well the service will clean and get rid of all of this dirt that accumulated over the year in a, in a chronograph caliber. So, yeah. Okay, so now we're going to remove the last part, which is the keyless work, which is pretty much standard compared to other watches so this is the parts like uh, like i said which allows you to when you pull on the crown to set the time or wind the watch so it's uh, it does basically the separation between the two when you pull on the crown it will drive the energy to the hand or it will drive the energy to the mainspring to wind it in function of what you do when you pull on the on the crown just removing the spring the yoke spring the yoke, which is a bit tight there. Here we go. And the last few parts. Remove. Just make them fall on the bench. There you go. We have the clutch. And the winding pinion there. Here we go. Just picking the jewels, just to, again, to remove any kind of dirt, to make it loose as much as possible when we put it in a, in a cleaning machine. Placing back the balance. And you see the, dial, the, 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 the plate, sorry, it's a bit worn. Like uh, the rhodium plating on it is a bit worn, but okay, that's uh, that's not too bad. But you can see uh, the finish with the perlage as well on the on the on the plate, which is a bit faded, but looks very very nice. See, just gently there, I'm going to realign the balance wheel. Okay. Just placing the screw to secure it. That's a safe place to keep it during cleaning because you don't want to damage your spring, any of the parts on the on the balance. Just cleaning the rest of the jewel, just cleaning the pivot again. Just a gentle polish on the pivot just to make sure like the oil or grease is loose. Going to open the barrel assembly there. See with a little wheel on the top there. Has to actually connect to the our mechanism for the chronograph. Oof, this is dirty inside a bit. Removing the barrel arbor, here we go. Just going to take out the main spring. And uh, and yeah, we're going to see if uh, with the amplitude, I'm probably going to change, change the main spring because the amplitude was really low, just to be sure. You're on the safe side to have a, a nice running watch. Probably going to change uh, the main spring. Okay, all the parts are in the baskets now and they are going to go to the cleaning machine. During cleaning, I would like to thank and uh, use the opportunity to talk to you about my Patreon page. So I have a Patreon account where I put the video a bit in advance compared to YouTube. And uh, if you subscribe to my Patreon, this will help me as well a lot to support the channel. Uh, and I would like to thank my existing patrons. So Shelby, Jean, Rune, Christian, Courtney, Alan, Swami, David, Ted, Tony, Michael, Stephen, John, Tim and Gregory. Thank you so much for supporting me, guys. And uh, if you want to join, you have a, a link in the description. You can go on my uh, Patreon account and you will be able to, to join one of, the, one of the accounts. So thanks in advance. Okay, now the watch is clean, rinsed, and now it's drying. We just dry the parts in the a, in a last uh, chamber, if you want, of my, uh, of my Elma cleaning machine. And we should have the parts, yeah. Like I said, they are clean rinse and uh, fully dried up so we can start the reassembly. Okay, just putting some grease on the bottom and 
Yeah, I did not capture it on a, on a camera, but I just put a new mainspring, like I said. Managed to find, actually, it's quite an old one, but a new one. Looks, I uh, love the color, like this blue steel, uh, blue steel color, which is very nice. Just place back the bell arbor, just greasing the top as well, just to make sure the mainspring will be uh, nicely lubricated inside the mainspring barrel assembly. And now we're just gonna close it with this tool. Gentle press on it. Just checking the end shake. Yeah, it looks good. Bit of end shake, but not too much. Okay, so the next step like I like to do before I start reassemble the movement is to oil the jewels for the balance assembly. So this one you see is not a, a shock, it doesn't have a shock setting. So we'll have to disassemble and the basically the, the balance assembly to get access to the jewel. And at the beginning, I did not really like this, but actually now it's, I found it quite nice to, to oil these uh, jewels. Pretty simple. Just removing the two screws. You will have big parts. You don't need to, to fiddle with the spring or with tiny uh, capstones. It's like big, uh, big parts. And now, here you go. I have access to the jewels. Gonna, after cleaning it, obviously, we, we treat it in epilam. Like we're going to do the same on this on the other side. And when the epilam treatment is on the plate, on the, on the part, sorry, gonna just put a tiny bit of uh, a drop of oil after, but like this one, what I like to do is I like to reassemble it. So now it's fully clean, it's treated in epilam. And I'm just going to reassemble together. Remember with the two screws, so these screws are so small. Look at it compared to my fingers. They are very, very small. Like that's the smallest screw that you can find on uh, on this watch, on most of the watch actually. They are very small. And actually, when it's back together, I'm just going to use my automatic oiler just to put a drop of oil in the middle. And I know with my automatic oiler, it's right in the right place and the right amount. So that's a, a easier way to do it for me. Now it's all, we're just gonna put back the, the, the balance wheel with the balance spring and the rest of the parts. Just make sure everything is aligned in the holes and the spring is in the correct place. And when it is, we can secure it with the screw on the side. Perfect, so the balance is done. We, uh, we will be able to put it back on the movement later on at the end and uh, it's already oiled and clean. So we're gonna do the same on the other side. Just grabbing this capstone, treated in epilam with uh, the pallet fork I just did, and I'm cleaning the pivot there and the uh, escape wheel. I'm gonna do the same, just put it back, put it back in place, and we're gonna use my automatic oiler uh, from the other side, just to make sure the drop of oil is the right amount and in the right place for the part. Perfect, the oil is in place. Okay, so now we can start the reassembly. Just placing back first the main spring assembly, oiling the hole for the center wheel there. Just gonna place back. And remember this one has a long pivot, so you need to align it with the with the hole, you see there. You need to put it at an angle and there put it back in the, in the hole. Here we go, the last wheel, and now we can put this big three-quarter plate on the top, which is keeping all these parts underneath, so we'll have to align all the holes. So that can be a bit tricky, but you need to be like patient. And you remember, you have one of the wheels which has a very long pivot, so you need to make sure it's aligned with the jewel. Just gently moving it around. There we go, now it's sitting down in place. and. With a tiny bit of pressure, we're going to move the parts just ever so slightly until everything falls into place. And when it's in place, like now, you see, for example, it looks not too bad. You can turn the wheel and everything will turn together. So that means everything is connected, everything is in the right place. Perfect. I'm going to secure that with the screws.
putting the oil there again to make sure like all the parts which are in contact metal to metal are properly lubricated and the friction is reduced to a minimum because you're in a watch, you're, the friction is your enemy. So it's uh, ruining the amplitude and the accuracy of the watch. So yeah, you. So that's why we're going to use a lot of different oil and grease in different points just to make sure the friction is reduced to, to a minimum and as well to prevent from the for the parts to wear too quickly because if the part is uh, wear down too much like yeah you will have to change it and on this watch for example this one is probably from the end of the 40s beginning of the 50s so it's a very old watch and um, yeah it can be difficult to find some parts and or very expensive to find some parts so that's why it's better to to take care of these watches and uh, do a service at a regular interval if you don't want to, to damage the parts too much. Okay, so now I'm putting the crown wheel to make sure I align because you see you have three holes. You will have two holes for the screw, for the screws, and actually you will have one hole where you will have the minute wheel from the chronograph coming through the through the through the parts there. Go, just putting screw here. And we can put the escape wheel, which has its own um, little uh, hook if you want. It's just, uh, here we go. It's, just, it's, it's a lot simpler to put, actually. You, don't, you only have to align one wheel in a, in a, in a jewel. So it's a lot easier to put on. And when it's, uh, when it's on, again, like I said, we did Previously, we're going to put a tiny bit of pressure on it until it falls down in place. And when it is, you see, all the wheels are turning together. There we go. Perfect. So that means it's in a proper, it's in a proper position. So, so far, so good. We have just assembled like the main component from, uh, from the balance side. Now we're going to move to the dial side, we're going to put the keyless work, putting some grease there on this part because I see a lot of friction. So I'm putting some 9501 grease there, again, to prevent uh, wear on, this, on these parts. So if you like the video, please just go and subscribe to the channel. I'm trying to put a video once a week. And uh, if you like it, click on the, on, the, on the thumbs and the bell icon. You will get a reminder when I put uh, the next video. Okay, putting the yoke in place through the clutch there, missing all the points which are, yeah, again, we see when you pull on the crown, these parts see a lot of friction, a lot of tension, because this big spring there that I'm, I'm putting is keeping these parts under, under a lot of tension. You see when I pull it, everything bam, move into place. And uh, yeah, that's the tension that uh, is creating by this spring. Okay, few intermediate wheel there. Place back the cannon pinion. Here we go, which is friction mounted, and the minute wheel. And we can put back the setting lever spring on the top with the two screws. And the keyless work is done. So basically, just need to arm the spring. Again, some grease because this spring see a lot of tension as well against the, again the parts, just removing the excess grease there because you just don't want to have too much and let's check if it works when you pull on it yeah looks good see the wheel turning when you set the time perfect it looks it looks good just placing back this wheel that's driving you remember the hour for the chronograph and so now we're going to start actually assembling the chronograph function start on the dial side there by putting the hour mechanism if you want. So all these parts, like for example, this is a brake for the hour wheel of the chronograph. You see, you will have this, you see, you remember when I told you like each screw is different. You see that like, for example, this one is quite big and it has a flat part, a non-threaded part on the, and this will act as a, rotating point, like at a pivot point. So that's why it's very important that you don't mix 
the, the, the screws or else you will not get the right effect on the, on the chronograph and you, it will not work. Lubricating the cam there, just to make sure when uh, the hammer hit the cam is resetting to zero properly, it doesn't get stuck in the middle. Placing all the part there. And you will have this plate, you remember, which is covering everything. Which has a spring as well underneath, which is putting tension on some of the parts. And what it is, okay, you can put the screw just to secure it in place. And this part as well actually is holding the the barrel arbor from, from the other side. So that's why I prefer to put these parts because or else if you put the rest, the balance wheel on the other side, the movement is not going to work correctly because the barrel arbor will not be held in place properly. Lubricating this because this will be, will be acting like, like I said, as a clutch. Like a fork, keep some tension on the on the on the parts. Oiling the pivot point, you see, with some ninety one hundred four there, and this is a hammer that we come and hit the the heart, the cam for the our wheel. Here we go now goes underneath the bridge here, align with everything, and we are going to secure it with a big screw. We need to make sure first that everything is in a proper position. And that's the screw like I was talking about. With again, a flat on it, a T underneath that I just lubricated. Okay, these parts, you remember, that come and we connect to the colon wheel. So like I said earlier, the colon wheel is a brain, if you want, of the chronograph. And uh, this part we connect to the colon wheel, and we go through the movement. And this is the part that I'm putting now. It's actually attached to this screw and to these uh, parts. And that's what will connect the dial side to the, to the other side for the chronograph, which is, yeah, quite, quite a clever solution. And the last part that I'm probably going to put on these sides are the springs. Like I said, you remember, I do the reverse process. When I disassemble, I remove the spring first to release the tension. When you reassemble, you put them last to put the tension in the movement. Okay. Just arming it there. There we go. Just oiling the point to make sure to reduce the friction and the wear. And this, this is a spring as well. Kept in place with two screws. What I like to do on this spring is just tighten them up a bit and here we go, put the screw in place and finish to tie them fully in position. We know all the jewels for the train of wheels. Again, some grease cleaning the excess on the spring. And that's it. So the our uh, chronograph mechanism is fully assembled and the dial side, dial side, most of the parts are on. So we can move to the rest by finishing to assemble the base caliber, if you want, like the timekeeping element of the, of the watch, by putting the pallet fork first, and after we put the balance and see if the movement is going to start or no. Pallet fork is in place. Just going to wind it. Just going to check if it clicks. Yes, it does. Perfect. So the power is coming to the pallet fork. I will lubric lubricate as well the pallet fork jewels off camera because it's quite tricky to do. And when it does, when it's done, I can put the balance with this beautiful blue air spring there and see if the movement want to start. So align it on the bottom pivot and try to align it now on the top. Try to put it gently in position. No, not yet. Pressing it down. Ah, looks a bit better there. You see, you don't need to just need to take it easy. Very, you don't want to put any strength. There we go. That's it. Perfect. Just start it. Okay. And now it's in place. Can secure the screw. 
So basically now what we have is we have a perfectly uh, running movement that would keep time. Uh, and we are going to start assembling the, the rest of the complication, which is for the chronograph. And uh, see if after the chronograph is working. So I stop the, I stop the movement there, I remove the power. Now we know it's, it's working. So that is safer to work on. Uh, when you work, you see you will, have, you will handle parts, you will handle screws, quite close actually to the balance wheel. So you don't want to run the risk of uh, parts coming and damaging the balance wheel while, while it's running. So that's why I, I stop the movement by removing the power. Okay, so I'm constructing now the base of the chronograph by putting the plate. There, you remember there was this small plate, putting a couple of parts, so that is small spring to align with the hole there. Again, another spring that's for the minute wheel, just to make sure it's a nice jump when you when you are close to the minute. This is a minute wheel. You remember that I told you it's going through the hole on the on the crown wheel there. This is the intermediate wheel that will drive the minute wheel. Perfect. Now we're gonna put an oiling. You see the bottom. We're gonna have, like I said, the brain of the chronograph, the colon wheel. And you see, you will have these parts, like I said, which is connected to the other side, which will come and go like on a column wheel between the holes or on the pin, depending on the, on the position. Like if you start, stop, or reset the chronograph, we have this big screw, which is acting as a pivot point for the colon. We are going to grease all the different parts because this, obviously, being the heart of the chronograph, we see a lot of uh, parts coming in contact with it, a lot of friction uh, coming in contact with it. So that's why it's very important to lubricate it properly. Again, now this is a spring keeping tension on the column wheel. We're installing all the parts, basically in a, almost in a exact reverse order that I did during the disassembly. So the Breitling, like I said, this Breitling Premier actually used a lot of uh, Venus movement, like mainly Venus, Venus movement, because, yeah, like I said, this, this movement is from 1947, and the Breitling Premier started during the World War II, actually, started in 1943 for the first, uh, first model. And, um, yeah, actually, until today, it's a range from, from Breitling. It's a, a, a very classic range, if you want, for, for a chronograph, a very classy range as well. You see, for example, this watch, which is in, in full gold. Um, yeah, they have some steel, uh, steel version as well, but a lot more subtle than, for example, a Navi timer that you could, could find on the, on the catalog and still can find on the catalog of, of uh, Breitling. Um, but much more, uh, yeah, like I said, elegant, a bit more classy, like you can go, it's a nice chronograph, obviously, it's a sports, because it's a sports watch, because it's a chronograph, but uh, a lot more uh, dressy than a, than a Navy timer, if you, if, if you prefer. Okay, just putting now the chronograph center wheel for the second of the chronograph. Just lubricating the cam, like we did on the other side on the hour wheel. This is the uh, parts that will help the chronograph to reset to the zero position. And this is a hammer, actually, that come in contact with the cam that has just lubricated. And uh, you see the flat parts on the cam, which is kind of a hard shape. The flat part on the top, that's what will be the zero when the flat part of the hammer hits it. Just make sure it's in place underneath with the springs and the parts. With this beautiful little bridge. I love the shape of this bridge on the side, which is like kind of a teardrop shape on each side with the two jewels in the middle and the, the Breitling name engraved as well. It's uh, in, in gold, it's beautiful. Just aligning the wheel, the pivot point in each jewels. 
just press it, you see, just very gently in position until, there we go. Now you see pivot point is in place. Yeah, and the spring you just put underneath, you see, you keep the tension on the, on these parts. Because you, you want to have a tiny bit of tension or else like the second will not move smoothly, will jump or we do random uh, random movements. So a tiny bit of tension, keep it like very smooth when you, when you run on a, on a chronograph. We're going to put all the parts as well. So that's all the parts that will come in contact if you want with the pushers and drive the, the mechanism and transmit the power or the information if you want to the column wheel, like I said, to start, stop, and reset the chronograph. Just placing the spring, put some tension here, like on these parts, like you come against the pusher. There we go, perfect. This long part as well, which is again one coming against a, a, a pusher there, and which is directly connected to the column wheel with this arm, articulated arm at the at the back, and this is a clutch with the wheel that will make the contact basically between the chronograph driving wheel, which was friction mounted there, and the chronograph wheel right in the center, and that's what we move back and forth to stop or start and make the connection with the with the center wheel of the chronograph. Okay, very important to lubricate all the parts that come in contact with the column wheel there. And again, we're gonna, at the end, placing the springs. There we go. And look at the shape of this spring. That's amazing. Like, I don't know how they managed to, to produce this type of shape, but like, uh, compared to, like, imagine that these parts were made like in the, in the 40s or 50s with machine at the time that was nowhere near compared to what we have today. And that's probably took a lot of time to produce a spring with this type of shape, which is very nice. Okay, just putting the spring in place. There we go, perfect. Okay, you see the part that came in place automatically when you put the tension on the, with the spring. Okay, again, spring coming against the clutch here. Lubricating the contact point. And let's see, you see the column wheel when I'm activating turning and making all the part move, start, stop, start, stop. But actually, there was something wrong with the part, remember, that was rusty. So I bought a new one. I actually managed to find a, a brand new one and um, just going to place it in place because I did not like the action. The parts were getting stuck a bit and the spring was, yeah, was worn off too much. So yeah, now, now it's working perfectly. I can see everything moving. So we're gonna move back to the other side, put this power wheel there, with this plateau in the middle, place back this beautiful dial. I love the dial. I love the, the font as well from the Breitling Premiere, especially from the Breitling. And place back all these hands. So starting by the hour hand, just pressing it down in place. It doesn't really matter where you put it because you don't have a date. I'm just aligning the minute hand with the hour hand on midnight. Again, just to be sure that when the hour hand is on an hour, the minute hand is on 12. That's the second hand from the timekeeping, if you want, not from the chronograph. It's always running. Okay, so we're going to clean the movement in the ultrasonic machine. Like I said, it was not very dirty, but I like to do a, a ultrasonic cleaning just to make sure we remove any dirt. And to put the rest actually of the hand and to set the chronograph and to, to properly, we're going to put the movement back in this beautiful gold case. Now it's clean as well. I did not polish the watch because it was 
in good shape. It's not too bad. And I, I prefer to keep it original. I like to keep vintage washes as original as possible. Here we go. Now we secure the mechanism is secure with the screw and we can put the chronograph hands. So first, the second one that we're going to put right in the middle there. Here we go. Let's check if we start the chronograph. Start. Stop. And the reset. Just need to push a bit harder. Something wrong, like with the, with the chronograph. So actually, there is a couple of screws that uh, make and set the chronograph, if you want, like in different places. So I just moved a tiny bit all these setting screws there. And you see now, now it's running, coming to a stop, and you see the hammer hit. So that, that looks better. So let's try again. I'm going to put the second hand. Start the chronograph. Like pushing a bit harder. There we go. Stop it and reset. There we go. Now we have a proper, it's, it's working properly. So that's done. That's set. We're going to check the rest. First, I'm going to put the minute wheel. The minute hand, sorry, on the minute counter there, align it to 30 or zero. That's a zero position. Press it in place. Gonna put the hour hand there for the chronograph. Again, put it to the zero position. And press it in place. And let it run. Let's see when it run. And actually, I can see immediately there is an issue. Look at the second, it's running. Look at the minute, it didn't move. Like uh, the reset is fine, but the minute didn't move. So again, I will trick some of the screws, some of the sitting screws. So you see now the, how the, the chronograph hand in the center, you have a little hand there where you have the hole and it's supposed to make the minute wheel turn. And it doesn't come even in contact with the minute wheel. So we'll have a screw like a, which is like slightly of center and by moving it i'm making the wheel coming closer and look at now you see the chronograph in the center you will see look you see the two wheels turning and that's it the minute jump so now i have a contact with the with the minute wheel and uh, when i put it back we should see the minute moving but first look i put the watch on a, on a time grapher and you can see the difference in result the amplitude went right up to 272. It was around 180. And the bit error, I like to get it below one. It was at six. But yeah, I I got it close to one. So I'm pretty pleased. I'm pretty pleased with that. And so now the watch is uh, running perfectly. It's just gaining a few seconds a day. But from a watch from the 40s, 50s, this is perfect. And that's it. Look, now we have a chronograph which is running. We should see the minute jumping. Perfect. We have a perfectly functioning chronograph, a beautiful one, a beautiful dial, beautiful case. So I hope you like this restoration and I see you next time for my next project. Bye bye.